Welcome to the beautiful Hampton Manor and to Practical Caravan TV, your weekly dose of touring treats. As ever, we've got caravan reviews, tow cars and campsite visits. But first, this. In a time of austerity, you might expect budget caravans to be the top performers. But in fact, the market for big luxury caravans such as this Buccaneer Barracuda is booming. Arrivals such as the Alaria from Luna and the revamped Swift Elegance are giving it some real competition too, so there have been changes. Last year, Buccaneer introduced the Galera, a proper family-friendly luxury caravan, and this year there have been further tweaks. It's still a five-model range, but the Clipper, with its unique transverse twin single beds, is now a more conventional layout with inline beds, and the old schooner with its traditional fixed nearside bed is gone. In its place, there's the Barracuda, which has a really interesting and different layout inside. Looks-wise, it hasn't changed dramatically. There are some tweaked alloy wheels and these rather flash new graphics. But what's more interesting is what's happened under the skin. The Buccaneer was the last eldest to still sit on a BPW chassis, and that's now gone, and in its place there's the more familiar Alco, like the rest of the eldest range. That means you can add a raft of Alco goodies, including an AKS stabiliser, an ATC traction control, shock absorbers, and a secure wheel lock to the already long list of standard goodies, which includes Aldi underfloor heating, and of course, the EMP self-leveling system. There are glamorous little details throughout this van, and they start from the minute you come through the door. If you're on a wet day, for example, as we most certainly are, and you come in with a damp coat, well, this is the perfect place to put it, just inside the door, in this rather neat little cloakroom. There's even space for damp shoes underneath. If I've got one complaint, it seems a bit of a shame that that area's not heated by the Aldi heating, but it's still a really useful detail to have. It's clear that Buccaneer have thought very carefully about the kind of people who buy these vans. Although this is a four berth, it really is only likely to be bought by couples who are seeking the ultimate in luxury on tour. And that's reflected in this lounge. It will seat four, but only at a bit of a squeeze and really no more than that. But for two, it's something really quite special, particularly when, as this van, is fitted with the optional leather upholstery. If you've got short legs, you may find these very long seat squabs a bit of a squeeze, but otherwise it's incredibly comfortable with these high seat backs and huge scatter cushions. And of course, the L-shaped sofa is perfectly placed for you to watch that standard 32-inch TV. Fantastic, what a thing to have in your van. And it's really neatly integrated too, something you don't always get with aftermarket units. Underneath it, there's a special area designed just for your game stations, or DVD players, complete with USB and 230 volt sockets. Just the thing for gamers and film buffs. Now, although the woods in a Buccaneer are relatively dark, it doesn't feel too dark in here, despite the loss of that offside window. And that's because you've got three front windows, a decent sized window here on the near side, and particularly overhead, a massive sunroof, and that colossal full length roof light that goes from the lounge to the kitchen area. You still get a reasonable amount of storage in here too. We've got four overhead lockers and space for bedding and the like underneath these sofas. Now talking of bedding, although this is a van designed for a couple, it does have four berths available. These sofas can be used either as a long single or by pulling out the frame underneath and rearranging the cushions, a decent sized double. There haven't been a vast number of changes to the kitchen area of the Buccaneer for 2018, but those that have been made have made a good difference. Over here on the near side, we've got a really good sized fridge with a built-in freezer, and above it, there's a microwave set at a really sensible height. That frees up plenty of space in the main kitchen area for loads and loads of worktop. I mean, there's simply masses of it here. There's no need for one of those pop-up extension flaps, and indeed there isn't one. Part of the reason for having all this space is this island unit, which sticks out into the main living space and creates a visual separation between the lounge area and the kitchen. It also creates space behind it there for an external locker, which is a really useful place to put those outdoor knickknacks. The other big change in the kitchen is this sink, and I'm delighted to see it. I was never a fan of those rather dated granite effect sinks that the Buccaneers had before. It's got a proper bit of worktop that drops in when it's not in use, 
and when it is in use look at the size of it it's absolutely massive it's definitely the biggest i've seen in a caravan behind it there's this illuminated splashback which looks really smart and alongside the Duriger dual fuel hob with three gas burners and an electric hot plate and beneath it a separate oven and grill there's also a load of storage in this kitchen area there are three big drawers the bottom one is absolutely massive a large cupboard and indeed a storage space for your lounge table overhead we've got three more lockers and probably the only thing i'm not very keen on in this kitchen this rather lightweight feeling cocktail cabinet door. That's not particularly to my taste, but I know that a lot of people really expect to see one in a luxury caravan. Now, believe it or not, we're actually only halfway through this van. So now it's time to take a look at the washroom. The washroom uses Eldis's tried and tested split design across the center of the van. Here on the near side, we've got a simply massive shower cubicle. It's so large, in fact, that the wheel arch intrusion doesn't really matter in the base because there's still plenty of space there. It's quite an attractive design as well with this tiled effect. And there's good to see useful details such as a soap dish, an orbit shower head which saves water, and the Dometic towel rail and dryer which pulls out from the sideboard. Here on the off side of the van, well, there's a bathroom. And this door neatly shuts off the bathroom from the rest of the van, turning this area into an ensuite. Inside we've got a concealed cistern, a heated towel rail and a bowl sink. And although there's no window, there is a good sized roof light and plenty of LED lighting, so it still feels plenty bright enough inside. And when you want to make the bathroom accessible to the rest of the van, but you don't want people to see your unmade bed, well you simply pull this sliding door back across. One thing I haven't mentioned about the Barracuda yet, of course, is the fact that it's eight feet wide. And you really do feel that here in this master bedroom at the back of the van. There are wardrobes on either side, as you often find with this layout, but they are very rarely this big. They're absolutely huge. Masses of space for storing all your clothes. Underneath them, there's a little shelf ideal for your books and cup of tea. And beneath that, a trio of drawers on both sides. The bed itself at the moment is in its retracted day mode, which gives you masses of space for walking around the foot of the bed and indeed to sit at the little dressing table in the corner here, maybe to blow dry your hair or do your makeup. There's a socket and a USB point there and another one on the bulkhead at the foot of the bed, which is an ideal place to put your TV. And that's why you'll also find a 12 volt point and an aerial point there too. At night, you pull the bed out, rearrange this mattress and it turns into a simply massive bed, well over six feet long. As you might expect, that means there's plenty of storage underneath it too, although that is restricted somewhat by the placement of the onboard water tank here. And of course, because it's on the back wall, there's no external locker hatch to access it. So anything you store under there, you're gonna to have to lug through the van to take it outside. There's a couple of good sized lockers and talking of good size, the skylight overhead is simply massive which is why this room feels lovely and bright. There's a lot of very sound thinking behind the design of the new Barracuda. By not making all of the compromises necessary to create a proper four berth caravan, Buccaneer has created a couple's van with room for a couple of guests or grandkids that feels incredibly luxurious. It's certainly not light and it's certainly not cheap, but then after all the effort and expense of bringing up kids, after they've flown the nest, don't you deserve something a bit extra special? Our colleagues on What Car have named the BMW 5 Series their car of the year for 2017. Ever since the car won that award, we've been itching to get behind the wheel to discover what all the fuss is about. And now we're going to find out. What Car's award went to the 520D Saloon. We're driving the 530D X-Drive Touring. X-Drive is BMW's name for its 4x4 system, which adds to the BMW's credentials as a four season tow car and increases the car's weight. With a curb weight of 1875 kilograms, it has an 85% match figure of 1,594 kilos. We're towing a Swift Expression 636 with a mass in running order of 1,417 kilograms. There's more than enough power and torque to cope with a Tourer of that size and weight. In fact, with 457 pounds feet of torque, the BMW's three litre diesel engine has almost double the pulling power of a typical two litre diesel in your average family car. 
that's enough for serious performance, even when towing a big twin axle tourer. In fact, the BMW can tow the Swift from 30 to 60 miles per hour in just 6.9 seconds. The BMW is surprisingly frugal for such a big car. It achieved 28.4 mpg while towing on a mixed route of A-roads and motorways. The 5 Series is stable at the legal limit too, helped by its clever suspension. Our test car has adaptive suspension damping with a choice of modes and despite the big 20-inch alloy wheels and rubber band tyres, comfort largely delivers on what it promises but with enough control for composed and stable towing. Switching to sport mode firms things up a bit but without becoming harsh. Whatever setting we chose for the suspension, the 5 Series handled the lane change test with ease, with very little lean and no pushing and shoving from the caravan. The 5 Series is a luxurious tow car, as well as a quick and stable one. The dashboard is dominated by the huge sat-nav and infotainment screen. Thankfully the system is easy to use. There's plenty of space for passengers in the front and the back, and the boot is a healthy size. However, there's more luggage room in a Mercedes-Benz E-Class. M Sport spec comes very well equipped, but some of the most appealing features, like the excellent surround view camera system, are optional extras. The 530D Touring is an expensive car, but if that doesn't put you off, it's hard to find serious fault with its credentials as a tow car. It's fast, it's practical, it's stable, and it has four-wheel drive. What more do you want? Now, last season, the Super Plus version of the Adria Adora was known as the Platinum Collection, and it was a runaway sales success. The only problem was it only applied to two models in the range, the Isonzo and the Thames. Now for 2018, Adria has another trick up its sleeve. It has upgraded the two Adoras that didn't get last season's treatment to have silver sides and a couple of interesting spec bumps, including the super desirable Aldi heating. So we're gonna take a look at the Rhine, which is a six berth model with a French bed at the rear, which is also 8.2 meters long with an MTPLM of 1700 kilograms. Now, although these vans are manufactured overseas, Adria switches its layouts for the UK, so the caravan door is here on the near side. Now, these sidewalls look very fetching too, and they're polyester faced, so they'll certainly be hard wearing. Now, all the services are on the other side of the vehicle, apart from the fridge vents, which are obviously going to go straight into your awning. You'll also notice the very smart alloy wheels, a very pleasing touch at this particular price point, and I get the feeling there are going to be some more upmarket touches in side. Now you certainly get a classy interior in this Adora and I love the fact that with no centre chest you can just come in and plonk yourself right in the middle. The soft furnishings will hide the dirt well and I particularly like the continental influences on the styling. And just look at the horizontal wood grain with the chrome effect and underneath that, that molded plastic, very pleasing indeed. A couple of other details up there of note, there's a speaker facing downwards into the lounge and also a spotlight next to it. Now on a van with Aldi heating and alloy wheels, I would have been expecting a spotlight at either end so you can read in all four positions when using the bed. Now talking about corners of the lounge, here on the offside we have a handy TV bracket, plus all the connections you need. Mains connection, 12 volt connection and an aerial feed. What more could you possibly want to enjoy the moving image? And talking about great images, right up above you have this incredible sunroof. It's absolutely massive and I really like the way Adria has engineered it to follow the same track as the rather large window in the middle of the lounge. Now right behind me here, as I said, there's no centre chest, but there is a handy flap for snacks and elevensies, which you can knock up in a matter of seconds. If, however, you fancy something a tad more formal, then this particular van has its own Danette on the offside. And here we are, a fine dining solution for the adults, so mum, dad or grandma or grandpa can push the children into the lounge and enjoy this dedicated space for themselves, however you want to slice and dice it. And talking about slicing and dicing, this brings us on neatly to the rather commodious kitchen here on the near side of the Tura. And this is a particularly fine unit too. I'm really loving the styling here, but it's got equipment to match. Three gas burners in a line for maximum ease of use. And next to that, a square sink with a smart mixer tap. 
Now one feature that I'm particularly pleased about is the illuminated splashback. Just check this out. And here it goes. Very smart indeed. Now further excellent styling and practicality is in evidence on these soft closing drawers. I particularly like this kind of feature and that kind of action. Next to that you'll find a separate oven and grill for maximum flexibility. Up above two overhead lockers, one of which has racking, and next to that the Duriger skinny fridge, which I'm pleased to reveal has the slide out bottle drawer. Now there isn't really much worktop in the kitchen, but there are a couple of workarounds. You can drop the lids here and put the infill into the sink to create some more chopping space. Alternatively, use the dinette here. What this kitchen does have, however, are some really cool racking for food, which slide out there, which you can stuff to the gunnels with perishables. Now this particular floor plan doesn't have an end washroom. What it does have, however, is a corner washroom. Yes, it's multifunction. Space is definitely at a bit of a premium, but you still get a bench loo, a smart mirrored vanity unit, including a tip-up sink, a shower attachment, central heating radiator, and a rail for hanging wet clothes on. Now the rear fixed bed has a split mattress, so you can raise either side of it to access the storage void underneath. And because of a hatch on the van, you can also load and unload items into and out of the van without having to walk through the middle. You'll also notice that the bed is set reasonably close to the floor, so it's very easy to get in and out. Another distinctive feature is the fact you can tip up the head section for reading at night, so you don't have to prop yourself up with pillows. A very elegant solution. Now people that follow trends in caravanning will have noticed that their nearside French bed is going slightly out of fashion. But who knows, innovations like this could prolong its longevity. Now there are two extra beds up here in the dinette. Makes up very easily indeed just by rearranging the seating after you've dropped down this mechanism from the wall. And adults, don't worry, in case you find it very tempting to go in that top bunk, there is a load limit of 50 kilograms. And here in the lounge is another large double bed, made up by rearranging the cushions on top of a sliding slat space. And don't worry about privacy, because there's a concertina blind at the rear, plus a curtain in the dinette. Now the Adria Adora Rhine 612DT, to give it its proper name, will cost you £22,395, and that does include delivery. Now it has an MTPLM of 1,700 kilograms, meaning that an 85% match for a tow car is 2,000 kilograms. So the changes for 2018 are certainly quite appealing. The silver sides, the Audi heating as standard. Whether you buy one of these particular models is obviously down to your personal choice. Whether you like what's on the inside, for example, and agree with Adria's definition of the spec list. Now interestingly, this van is reasonably heavy, it's long, and there are other options available at a similar price point. Now Adria's build quality is second to none, in fact it's positively bomb proof and something to consider for the 2018 model year is the fact that the body shell integrity guarantee has been extended to 10 years. Now that's certainly something to bear in mind. Now the new unicorn continues with Bailey's Alutech body shell construction, so very strong and very durable. The sides are hard wearing GRP. And speaking about those side walls, check out the fetching new graphics scheme. Yes, the B has been shrunk slightly and there's a new color gradient introduced at the back. Another little thing of note at the front is an improvement in the decor too. Look at the A-frame fairing, it gets a very good black cover. And keeping up with the black theme, the massive picture window is retained. And instead of a sticker, you now get another plastic panel above each side, which looks very fetching indeed. Now, if you excuse me, I'm literally going to jump right through the lounge window and take a look inside. Now, as everybody knows, Valencia is a four berth with a French bed at the rear and an end washroom. Up front, we have parallel sofas, as you would expect. We'll talk about the bed in a minute, but before that, let's just talk about this amazing new lounge. You can see the eucalyptus wood finish with these high gloss locker facings. And look at this action, very smooth indeed, like something you'd find in a continental caravan and no positive catches. So no broken fingernails when you're basically getting things out of those lockers. Another cool feature is this radio behind this locker door. 
It's not any old radio though, no, it is actually DAB, and it has Bluetooth connectivity for smartphones and tablets. And check out the speakers, they face into the lounge rather than downwards, so you can crank up your tunes to your heart's content. Now the twin lounge sofas are 5% longer than the previous version. How has Bailey done this, you may ask? Well, thanks to the Herculean strength of the Alutech body shell construction system, they've been able to remove the bulkhead at the front, and that means a longer seat bench on both sides. Now the parallel lounge sofas obviously make up into a very handy guest bed, and it does this very easily by pulling out the slats on a rope from under the center chest. All you need to do then is arrange the cushions. The two biggest ones go in the middle and these backrests go down the side. All very comfortable and quick to make up and pack away. But it's not the best bed in this van by any means. And here it is, the main event. Yes, the French bed in the Valencia. Bailey has certainly been busy lengthening things and the bed is no exception. Six feet, four inches. Absolutely fantastic. Now for anyone out there that thinks a fixed bed is a waste of space and you're just basically transporting things around for no reason, then I challenge you, have a lie on this and see what you think afterwards. And the other advantage to having a French bed, of course, is the voluminous storage space underneath. Here, easily accessed via a gas strut. Now you can load items from inside the van or outside, thanks to a handy hatch. And talking about storage while we're here, we have a full length wardrobe and opposite that, a pair of overhead lockers, plus a couple of cubbies in the corner. And look at the LED lights above the bed. They also have those USB sockets. And thoughtfully, Bailey has included a couple of shelves so you can charge your devices while you're nodding off to sleep. Now lurking behind the French bed, you'll find this rather pleasing end washroom, the ultimate in comfort and convenience for many buyers. Now the look in here is certainly very interesting. Danish minimal, I think they call it. Look at this long mirror and this shelf for sticking lotions and potions when the van is stationary. There's also a preponderance of hooks, two here and two here. Now, where's the toothbrush holder you're thinking? Is it next to that rather smart looking oval sink? No, in actual fact, you'll find it here in this locker. So a spectacular solution for keeping things neat and tidy. Well done, Bailey. Now on the other side of the washroom, you'll find this rather delectable shower compartment and it's got two rather good features. There's a handy rail that comes down from the roof here for drying wet clothes and also a caddy for lotions and potions that hooks around the shower attachment. Elsewhere in the washroom, you'll find this handy laundry basket and there's no towel rail. Instead, you get a radiator to keep this space warm and toasty. Now the Valencia's kitchen has seen another series of upgrades. There's a 30% increase in food preparation space by basically adding this wooden board on top of a conventional lid. And that works very nicely indeed. Aesthetic touches at the back include this splashback, very fetching indeed. Equipment wise, you have a separate oven and grill, a microwave oven, and on this side of the vehicle, the Duriger skinny fridge. And another clever design detail is the way Bailey has changed the orientation of the two plug sockets so you never get any cable foul. And next to the sockets, you can increase the worktop space even further with this handy flap, very good indeed. Under the sink, you'll find a couple of soft closing drawers, a very elegant solution. Now we haven't had the prices and weights for the Bailey Unicorn 4 Valencia so far, but it's safe to assume that if the current version is just under 1500 kilograms all up, then this new one will be slightly lighter. Now price wise, the current version retails for £22,399. It's safe to assume that with all these goodies and improvements that the price will rise, but Bailey was being pretty coy and wouldn't tell us how much. Now one thing is quite interesting is that while many Bailey rivals are dropping this layout from their portfolios, Valencia is in fact the second best seller in the Unicorn range, and on this evidence I can't see that changing anytime soon. And with that, we come to the end of another show. Don't forget that you can keep up with us on Twitter, on Facebook, or via our website, and that Practical Motorhome TV will be along in just a few minutes. And we'll be back next week with what will be the very last show in this series. It's been emotional.